In this presentation, Kofi finishes a space to store clothes and declares the minimum standard for DIY closet space. A journey of home renovation and maintenance. Welcome to Maintaining 18. Some quick points while looking at the space and overlooking the less than perfect walls, as the court does with sworn officers lying to obtain confessions from suspects. At Maintaining 18, quality, strength, and other means of comparison have to be above builder grade. The level of ordinary closets is in motels, hotels, or apartment rentals. Exclude what is observed by googling penthouse closets. This master closet spans 67 inches or 5 feet 7 inches. It is 1 foot and 5 inches deep and just under 8 feet high. Be back in a few seconds. Some preparation needs to be done. The trim in the ceiling needs to be removed and the wall would not withstand the pressure from prying without damage, hence the wood support. Removing the trim is harder than it looks. They are made from hardwood and attached with 2 inch nails. Kofi thinks the viewers will not share in this pain but to some extent will have to address the ceiling of their closet. The trim does not come off as a whole. Typically, there is a nail where it breaks. As Kofi prepares the closet, comment below stating what features would make your clothes cupboard more useful. Kofi thinks refinishing the ceiling is a great way to include cedar in the closet space. The benefits of cedar are well suited for the closet space. It deters bugs. It will allow for the hanging of damp, delicate clothes for drying. There is something about the smell of cedar, but in these times, who can smell? Removing trim gets messy. Kofi caulked the gap. Now there is a clean slate. The building begins. There are some considerations when working in an older house and more on this shortly. Starting with the right side of the ceiling. Tongue and groove cedar is used for the new ceiling. The joists do not allow for 67 inch cuts of cedar to be nailed. That means the cedar would be installed length running from left to right. The cedar boards will be installed with the length going front to back. Glue allows the cedar boards to run left to the right but it's a more complex installation and includes drying time for the glue and special methods to hold the boards in place while the glue cures. boy, keeping it simple. Here's a quick glance of the progress. There are additional steps, be back to the ceiling in a bit. Kofi took some time to seal the drywall on the inside of the closet. The sealer was applied only around the edges. The layout is done by locating and noting where the studs and pipes are and then noting where the studs, shelves and divider will be placed. The layout will speed installation as construction steps require installing and deinstalling parts and the layout does the remembering. It is important to locate the studs, as the studs will support the shelves and the rod. The wall hides water pipes. This is important, as long screws should not be used to reduce the risk of creating a water leak. The pipes are expected to be 1 and 3 quarter inches away from the drywall. As an astute viewer, it will not escape your notice. A line marked the joist in the ceiling, letting Kofi know where to nail the cedar boards. This was done as part of the layout. Also note, the final location of the divider was changed from the original design to give more space to the left for hanging longer garments like mermaid dresses. The location of the stud was a factor in adjusting the design. Measuring to the corner in search of studs is an issue. In this case, assume there is a stud in the corner. next step is to have the shelf supports in place. The shelf support is a wood on which the rod and shelf will rest. The support is made from cedar. The closet flange, which holds the rod, is centered in the support and screw holes are pre-drilled. Square supports are ordinary. 
and a decorative edge is added to the underside making the ordinary extra. Pre-drilling is not needed to drive the screws. Pre-drilling is done to locate the screw holes after finishing has been applied to the supports. The installation of the support is next. The shelf needs to be perfectly level and the support ensures this. If a ball is placed on the shelf, it should not move. Looks like Kofi is in luck. The location of the stud will allow the hiding of the screws to fasten the support to the wall. Kofi is taking note of where the support and the studs overlap. Screw holes are pre-drilled and then the support is installed on the wall, perfectly level and in alignment with the layout. The shelf support along the longer wall or the back wall is installed. This support is square on all sides or to put it another way, it lacks finery. It looks better against the decorated sides. Shorter screws were used and general contractor screws and two and a half inch screws were used for the side supports. The shorter screws were used for areas where pipes were detected. Longer screws were used otherwise. This is the final and easiest shelf support to install. The gap between the shelf supports is for the divider, which Kofi will demonstrate next. Before revealing how Kofi managed the complications of the divider, a hurried discussion on the partial shelf. The wall spanning the closet has a slight bow about quarter inch from the sides. The corners of the closet space are not square to each other. This complicates things. The solution was to use relief cuts at the edges and allow a quarter inch gap instead of scribing and cutting for a quarter inch correction. Kofi felt great about the shelf as it was cut to perfection. While Kofi's expectations were not met, he got over it quickly. There is quite a story behind the divider. The design of the divider is a mixture of errors of omission and a clever solution. The right side of the closet is a double hung rod and the left is a single rod. The divider makes this happen by providing sturdy support for both sides of the divide. The divider is made from two 21 over 32 inch times 16 inch times 8 feet unfinished spruce pine fear board. A wider board makes a more attractive look and is sturdy or beefed up. The boards are cut to size and then glued and screwed together. The screw holes are filled with wood filler. This will serve as the divider. Narrator is about to tell you Kofi's secret. Esteemed viewer, did you catch the first error? It is made for a better outcome to fasten the pieces of wood together before cutting to the final size. Kofi planned something different for the divider. The divider was to have the same embellishment as the supports. Well, it did not look too great. The alignment was not proper and there were gaps. The short of it, it was cut off. When putting the pieces together, they did not align well enough to go unnoticed. As a result, the divider was reduced in size to make it square. A different line of thought and counter to my advice is it is easier to work with smaller lumber and then combine them. But precision is a must. The wood is not precise to begin with. In this case, each piece of lumber was not square and there are some bows. There's more to come on the divider. The divider will be flush to the wall. There's one issue to surmount. This is how Kofi made the cuts. The baseboard was scored using a utility knife. The cut was not deep and so a chisel was used to make the cut more pronounced. The purpose of this is to serve as a guide for the saw blade and prevent chipping and made carefully as not to harm the wall too much. If you have not done so as yet, please consider subscribing. The 
channel is about home maintenance and renovation. The blueprint for the presentations indicates that difficult sections or mistakes be highlighted. This is for your benefit. A perfect fit at a boy Kofi. Kofi noticed another issue. The divider is not flushed to the floor. Here is how it was resolved. The bottom of the divider was scored with a guideline and then cut to size. Cutting the divider, making it flush with the floor, made the divider too short at the top. More on this in a minute. The focus is back on the shelf. Originally, the shelf went left to right at the back of the closet. The shelf is now being extended to the side with wings. The narrator calls it the wings for discussion. The pieces of wood came from the divider, which was much longer and cut down to size. The shelf is 10 inches at any point. The only issue when assembling the shelf was the alignment. The lumber was not the same depth and had to be sanded. Now that the parts are in place, the finishing is next. The parts were taken out except for the ceiling and finished. The supports with polyurethane and the shelves and divider with paint. Want to see what happens when polyurethane is placed over paint? Well, it turns yellow. Kofi Daughter notices. It is not a good outcome, but Kofi heard Ajoa speak of repainting, so he did the intelligent thing, leaving it to Ajoa. As mentioned earlier, the story about the divider continues. The divider is now too short. To make up for this, cedar is used to extend the divider and as embellishment. Kofi is installing a valet rod. The layout was done so the fasteners would be two inches in from the ends of the rod. Screw holes are partially pre-drilled a quarter inch deep. The mounting studs are secured with pocket hole screws. The pocket hole screws are longer compared with those packaged with the valet rod. Kofi had these on hand and they were a great length. Keep in mind the divider is wider than the typical closet supports. The installation had a minor issue with inserting the carriage. The carriage opening in the mounting studs was not in good alignment. <laughs> the layout was good. The mounting stud only needed to be turned and ever so slightly. The layout lines are removed with Kofi's go-to method. The carriage is then tightened at the top of the mounting studs using the Allen wrench, completing the installation. Notice how dark the closet is. This is why lighting is needed. Kofi chose to install battery operated lights. The review states they last about three months. Charging these lights does not add much maintenance burden. Kofi prefers hardwired lights, but it's best left for another time. Installation was easy and went beyond the manual based on previous experience with adhesive tape type installs. Kofi pressed against the adhesives for about a minute. Doing this ensures lasting adhesion. It seems the in thing is having no closet doors. Closet doors are required to maintain a clean look no matter how much closet finery. The doors are unattached and by appearances will have a good outcome when installed. The challenging part was to prepare the frame to accept the hinge. Because the trim had been installed around the frame, the router template guide had to be shimmed and Kofi used pencils. There was an issue with one hinge. The router guide bearing went below the template and damaged the template and removed too much wood. Kofi recommends adding another bearing when installing door hinges on trimmed out door openings. This work was done inside and it is less of a mess to use a hinge butt guide and a chisel. The choice is yours. Some areas of the closet required painting and by the door frame and the opportunity to correct the horrible yellowing was seized. Kofi is installing a mirror on the door. Hollow door anchors are used to support the mirror along with clips. Details of the parts used are in the description. Installing the anchor does not require pre-drilling, but to get them started can be a challenge. Good thing Kofi is wearing gloves to stabilize the anchors. The location of the anchor allows for the highest mirror placement. The placement allows viewing the body from head to toe. While Kofi installs the clip, if you haven't done so, please consider subscribing. 
like, share or comment on the video as you see fit. These actions help the channel to grow and is very encouraging. It is important to keep in mind that the top clip is spring loaded. The mirror is thin and there is a gap between the mirror and the door. At a later date this will be resolved. Reinforcement is added to the door to allow for hooks to hold heavy bags and not just empty bags. Cedar wood is attached to the frame of the door using four screws. The hooks are then attached to the cedar. To get the reinforcements in the right position, a square is used. It's also important to pre-drill into the door and not just the reinforcement. There was one issue, there was a split. To avoid splits, pre-drill holes and ensure they are deep and wide enough. To repair the split, drive the screw deeper, increasing the split. Apply some glue and here Kofi is using cyanoacrylate. Once the glue is in, remove the screw and clamp the split. Next, pre-drill the hole correctly and reinstall the screw. Ready for the minimum standard for DIY closets? The minimum standard for a DIY closet is double hanger rods, single hanger rod, a shelf, a valet rod, hooks, lights and a full length mirror. Double rods increase the amount of space used for hanging clothing. The single rod makes for storing longer items. It also leaves some space on the floor for storing items such as shoes or furniture with drawers. The valet rod is handy. Clothes usually are laid out on the bed and the valet rod is more a convenient option. The shelf is for storing items which are not needed regularly and for longer term storage. Lights bring visibility to dark spaces. The full length mirror because Kofi cares how he looks from head to toe. Men no more looking down to assess how you look. The day is one.